this session, we're talking about choosing repertoire for the beginning and the intermediate students. Um, so, a few considerations. Uh, the teacher's time, the student's timetable, taste. These are all T words, so if you were to come up with something different, that's why they're all T. Time period, time in the lesson, toughness or difficulty, and teaching goals. Um, first of all, the teacher's time. So we know sometimes that a teacher sets aside like a week to choose repertoire. I don't know if that's actually how you do it, but um, maybe though you have like 30 seconds at the end of the lesson and the student has told you, hey, I want to do this, or you know that you want a certain type of music. So sometimes we have it well thought out. Sometimes it's just a um, short amount of time, but um, the second one is the student's timetable. Perhaps they have three months to learn a piece. Maybe you're thinking a year ahead with competition repertoire, or maybe um, this happened last week. I had a student who I knew wasn't going to make it with the concerto, and so we chose a piece they could learn in one day and have it memorized. Like, that happens, right? Not just me, right? <laughs> All right, so taste. Every student has a different need, a different desire, and it's, for me, it's really hard for me to choose repertoire. I, I don't want to choose the outside of the lesson. I want them to play. So a lot of times, like when we choose a concerto, I pull out my, my pile of concertos. I'm talking about student concertos, really, not, not the big ones. And I might play through like 20 in four minutes, and we narrow it down to two or three. And then they just say yay or nay. Really, I play them the two themes. They're like, every concerto has two themes. Tell me if you like both of these and then we'll choose repertoire that way. Uh, and time period, perhaps you're looking for a certain time. Um, Baroque, classical, romantic, ragtime, look, looking for a certain thing. Um, maybe you have a lot of time in your lesson to take care of it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're looking for a challenge piece, difficulty, sometimes you're looking for something just that's fun. All of these things you need to consider when you're choosing repertoire, right? <clears throat> and then you're teaching goals. So um, beginning goals, and what I'm trying to do is kind of give you a background here, a base, and then I'm going to show you a whole lot of repertoire that I love. Um, so choose repertoire that teaches musicality. Um, notes, expression, rhythm, fingering, so I would say NERF for my students. I'm sure you all have some acronym, I don't know. So notes, expression, rhythm, fingering, habits, I want them to, from their repertoire, learn how to practice and observe everything in the music and be obedient to the music, to the composer. I want them to learn at the beginning how to play a slur, how to shape it. Oh, you know what? I have a handout. Okay. <laughs> You're all writing madly. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> and I had a handout for something else. Yeah, we do have this stack of handouts over here to. Do you want me to pass those out? Are there a different ones? <clears throat> I think I've got Oh, now you've got a different handout. Oh, oh. This is, um, so the handout does not include all of this yet. The handout just includes a list of music um, that I'm going to cover. So write all this down, but you don't have to write down all the specific composers and repertoire that I'm going to cover. Um, and from early, early development of music, I want them to have great tone production. So anything that's not musical, any single note, any phrase, I just stop them and we redo that phrase musically or that note. Sometimes even they'll be playing a phrase and one note sticks out. I'm sure you have a whole experience. But this is my goal with repertoire at the beginning. And earlier I mentioned the joy for your piano and the band, right? But if you don't use this, there's plenty of books to use. I'm just going to show you some of the musical themes that are taught in this book in a specific order. Uh, you can't see this very well, can you? That's okay. Um, so this is the beginning of the book. Hopefully I have most of these memorized. <laughs> so you really can't see these. 
If you're doing a Rachmaninoff concerto, all of this, all of these habits will still go towards that end. <clears throat> um, drifting clouds. Just order it and get through all these details. Um, in the pagoda, we talked about earlier, we sing a G flat major with ties and slurs. English dance has a different rhythm. And this is all within that one book, so it goes from very simple to whatever. And once they get to about 12 months, I'm like, do you remember what the title was? <laughs> Joy of First Year Piano. So I have a little boy, and he's like at 18 months, and he's still playing this. And I'm like, you were supposed to be done six months ago. What are we going to do? Like, we can't play this after one year. <laughs> you better practice more. Anyway, English dance, I start with strawberry, strawberry, apple, grape. When I just send it off with them, I just have them play the beginning before they leave their lesson. Um, Sally go around is in 6 a.m. <laughs>
now what I really wanted to share with you. <laughs> so that was kind of whirlwind, and I don't mean it in a whirlwind. It's just that you all have your own ways to teach those things. There's not one way, but look for all those little developmental things that go into the big works, <laughs> things that, pieces that grow great habits. So a lot of pieces, oh, some books, you can't really play musically. So choose books that students can play musically and have great tone and share with their families. It doesn't have to be fast. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be played beautifully. So at the beginning, make sure you just set good habits. Um, intermediate repertoire and even for beginning repertoire, studio projects are, and that's kind of what I want to focus on, is studio projects. So a studio project is something that everybody takes part in and can be done on any level or lots of different levels. So I'm going to share with you a lot of composers that have works for children. And almost all of these are available on IMSLP, so online for free. I have a few of the books that I, I've purchased, but most of this you can just find. And this is an ongoing project, but it's a rabbit hole, I tell you. I <laughs> went down this rabbit hole this week and I didn't, I don't know, I didn't cook very much, didn't do laundry until the day before I left. But mm -hmm. it's just so fun to see all these pieces and um, some I like, some I don't like so much, but I'm gonna share with you the ones I really like. And they represent, um, Spain is the top room, but these are the countries that are represented in the pieces that I'm going to play for you. Um, so I think you can teach by geography. All these things are represented around the world. You can teach time periods and different styles. So with a um, music project, a studio project, what I mean by that is so we did some at the University of Utah. So this was always in addition to my repertoire, so I wasn't a fan then, but I'm more of a fan now. So we would, as a studio, all do, we did all the Debussy preludes on um, both books. So I had to do that in addition to what I was learning, like my <coughs> repertoire, but we all took two or three, all of them were assigned out, and then we did a concert with everyone playing all the Debussy preludes. It was a huge, great experience for me. Sure, you can go online and listen to them, but it's great when you can delve in a little bit deeper. We did all the Beethoven sonatas, all of them. And that was during COVID, so we recorded them and put them online. Same with all the Chopin etudes. All of those were signed out. Some we just played a little slower. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, after that, they did all the Prokofiev preludes, and they did all of the preludes and fugues. Well, Tempered Clavier, book one and two. So I helped out with that one too. Um, but what, what can you see the benefits of doing something like that? They all get excited about it. If you say everyone's going to play something that Beethoven wrote, even the younger <clears throat> kids, and yeah, they get excited about it, being part right, of it. Right, and so it's unifying your studio. Piano can be a lonely sport, and it makes them yes, feel like they're yeah. a team. Yes, and then you learn more about that composer and you learn more about, like, who's going to sit down and listen to the Well-Tempered Clavier, the whole thing? Probably not very many of us, right? And a lot of times you could bring in someone to talk about it or to give a master class and then everyone can listen and have the books. Also, when my students were younger, I, um, if you ask them to buy, like, the Beethoven Sonatas, sure, it's a great investment. But they're probably going to play like one or two when they're with you. And, it, you know, Beethoven, Henley editions, they're like $50, $60, right? So they pay for this book and then they don't use the whole thing or they play one or two. So I think this is a great way to use the whole book and experience the whole book without having to learn every single piece. Um, this is a book that I actually didn't buy yet, but my sister mentioned this. She's in Virginia. and. Um, I love these. I used to, I think somebody, I let somebody take it, but these in masterpieces, and I wish I had pictures, but she takes pictures of these works of art, and then Catherine Rollins, she writes a piece to go with it. So this piece, I don't know if I can see it well enough to play it for you, but you can imagine what it sounds like. This is Washington Crossing the Delaware. And um, anyway, beautiful artwork in these books, and my sister has all her adult students doing this as a project right now, so they're playing all of them in this book, and she said they're actually really loving it. And there's several of these books, three or four of them, so a great resource. 
So I did um, some silent films. You know, Heather Smith does silent films a lot. But I did some, I think I did three of them. I did one at a veteran's home and then two at the library. And my students, all levels, helped playing the background to silent movies. So uh, I found, um, of course we know the Scott Joplin book, um, the Martha Mears, Jazz Rags and the Blues, where that was like the simple level of the ragtime. I even took some, I think we did, like my very beginning students did some things out of a joy first year piano. And Scott Joplin, these are the easier rags. We used a few of those. And then Ragtime <coughs> Jubilee is ragtime by anyone but Scott Joplin, which was a huge, great resource because I was getting a little bit tired of Joplin. So, so um, anyway, take a look at this Jubilee book. It's great. It has, they're just a little bit different, but they're ragtime, just different composers, which is a breath of fresh air. Um, all right. So... The, now we're going to go through a bunch of composers, and I'm just going to play some of this music that I have really think that I want to do all these projects now. But we all know the notebook for Anna Magdalena Bach. Did you know that you could show your students the, the actual book? It's on iMSLP, has the cover. So you could actually show them this is what it looks like. I can't remember what library it's in, but... Um, <laughs> Susan Dillmeyer did a presentation earlier when I was just starting to teach right out of college. And I wasn't a huge fan. <laughs> but, um, but now I think if on any of these pieces, like if you don't like it, I even have some Schoenberg in here. So if you don't like it, they just have to play one piece, contribute to the project, and it's a great eye opener. So um, this one. <laughs> Bartok just collected, he was the first real ethnomusicologist mm -hmm. and went and collected all these folk songs. So you can say this is what children in Hungary might have just been singing. <laughs> you I've had lot kids who have said I want to learn more bar talk which you're like okay <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing too oh and he has a lot of drinking songs in here <laughs> if you want to add a little spice um that's the other thing that I'll play you some capustin but um they hear other people playing it and then they're like oh I want to play that and so they'll come back and all right this is Amy Beach this that's Amy Beach. So, um, 1867 to 1944, and I played some of her works. And Thank you. 
much, by the way. I noticed. Um, okay, so there's a lot by Amy Beach. It's fun to have um, have women composers, but then don't, don't overdo that. So I was using Jenny Boster's. I, she sent me her book to review. So she has a book about women composers through the ages, starting from 15th century to to now, and it's been um, great. That's I think where I got Amy Beach and. Um, for its price and works by them. Um, but then make sure you get the boys stuff in there too because I think I was going a little heavy on the girls and then I just want to make sure that the boys, but I think this is a delightful album. Um, Beethoven, you'll recognize some of these. <laughs> music when I was little. And when we would choose music, I'd always say, 
she'd say, what kind of music do you want? Because we lived in a small town, and she would go to the music store an hour away, and she would pick up our music and bring it home, right? So I'd have to kind of tell her in advance. And I'd say, I can do contemporary is okay, but not really weird. And so I thought he was really weird. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> um, and then they had these little pictures. I always wanted pictures on my music, so sometimes she would draw me pictures, but this one has little pictures. So between three, four, and four, four. that talked about this at the state conference. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was showing how fast Eugen could do this, and I came home thinking, yeah, I needed that for the first one. <laughs> um, anyway, so a great thing to develop. Bergmuller, we know Bergmuller Opus 100. Um, this is actually in the Snow Book, so I have no <laughs> Chick Corea. 
I ordered his book a while ago because it was 10 compositions for piano by Chick Corea. Um, so I'm not the best improviser, I'm not comfortable, but I'm going to show you. Here we go. So in this, he says, there are no rules except your own taste, which are also free to change as often as you like. <laughs> so he writes these things, and he writes... You can change it. You can do it as many times as you want. You can add to it. You can even not play it. That's his instructions, right? <laughs> so with this... long or as short as you want, but he wrote 10 pieces. I think even I can improvise with a little guidance, and these are actually, I'm convinced they're good. This week. I haven't pulled this book out for quite a while, so I'm glad that I had to do this for this presentation, right? And these are actually pretty fun, and I think I would have my adult students probably try this out, sit down. No one knows if you're playing what's in the music, or if you're not, you can end it when you would like. But these, um, so that you can, and I like said, you can get this online. And um, this is not for free, but that's what the cover looks like. And he just recently died last year. So, all right. Victor Kosenko. Yeah, I'm not covering everybody on the list, but if you go to Kosenko's pieces, we actually did this as a project for my adult students. So they each picked a piece out of here. That's, the, that's one of them. He's from Russia. And this is, um, well, this is Chasing Butterflies. students have them play like six of them and then then easier ones um, you could just get to one but this is one that I had a student she, she's kind of beginning I used to teach her children years ago and then she's decided to come take lessons but she's playing this she just played this last week in master class and she came back and she said someone played this like six months ago and I would really like to play this so this was a result of one of the studio projects <laughs> Facebook page now. Australia teacher. Um, so she's very vocal online. So she had mentioned this and so anyway that's why I ordered this. But this was the representation from Australia and she has two books of little peppers. Isn't that the cutest baby? Do you have them? So I just got these in the mail last week. Um, Oh, that was a 
Staccato Staccato, which I love. The teach, and this is five four salt and pepper. <laughs> So kind of improvisatory. Who do I have next? Pinto. Um, have you guys used Pinto? Does it, everybody know Pinto? Um, where is my Pinto? Oh, you know this. <laughs> playing her quintet in my July Chamber Music Series concert. Um, quintet, so piano, violin, violin, viola, cello. Kalari's playing with us, actually, he's coming up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> so I looked up at what she had for children. She was the first um, uh, woman of color to have her, her symphony played by a major orchestra in the United States. So, um, if you look at some of the histories of these people, too, for her, she had, um, uh, I'm trying to think of all the political ways to say this correctly, her mother was of American descent and her father was African descent. And so, um, she could pass, she um, actually, in one of her, and, and, uh, her school applications, she put that she was Mexican, and that's how she got in, and then, um, so anyway, she really had to push to get her own education and to be in, included. Um, but her quintet, you all have to watch it online. If you follow my Facebook, I'll post it eventually. But her quintet is so fun to play, so fun. And then these are her um, little pieces for children, which you will love also. And these are available online. Bright eyes, the goblin and the mosquito. I think you're rec you would recognize a lot of his 
those pieces. And I looked up on Clara, and she was busy performing and taking care of eight children. So I guess she didn't write. And she was coaching her husband through composing easier stuff. Like his stuff was so difficult. And I, I read quotes. She was like, you've got to write things that people can play. So he was the one that wrote the children's pieces. Tchaikovsky's album for the young. and among they each have to play a little bit they could even play a half piece I don't know but opus 19 is very doable um, so I have got to the second piece and these are not 12 tones so you can't explain that way he was just being kind of minimalist this um, set so this picture on the right is a painting by Schoenberg and it was it's the picture of um, Mahler's funeral his burial so Mahler was a good friend of Schoenberg's, and um, so when he died, he was actually working on his theory book and just proofreading it. So he took a couple days off to write this Opus 19. So these were when he was really going through the mourning process and very sad, and he was just... Um, anyway, so I feel like they're very accessible to children or adults, right? One. <coughs> piece is thirds. So I always think you need a hook, like something to sell. You're the seller of this music to your students, right? So this you could say, if your best friend died, what kind of music would you write? How would you represent them? Anyway, silence is a big deal in this piece. And um, I just think it's, this is a great lesson. And Schoenberg, I always feel like my students will know who Schoenberg is, and they're like, oh, you don't know who that is. Because when they have to write composers down the, from each, each century, and Schoenberg is so monumental, part of the German tradition, and they should know. Anyway, so consider Schoenberg for your students. Um, and then I have, um, I wanted to include a little bit of Chinese and Japanese, but I don't know composers from those places, so I had um, these folk songs. piano so when they get to Jasmine Flower I always pull up a video on YouTube of these big choirs singing this simple folk song because it's very important whenever I have Chinese students the parents will say oh yes I know that piece we sing it so when they get to that little piece in Joy First Year Piano I make a big bigger deal of it than normal and then I do have a Korean um, adult student and Ari Dong is one of her favorite folks <laughs> Thank you. 
folk song, they play it much more beautifully, especially that little one, the Chinese folk song and the other. Enjoy for What's the publisher of those books? Oh, Leonard. Oh, yeah. Thanks. On the bottom. Yeah. Um, all right. So have fun and enjoy your adventure with piano music. I wrote on the bottom of your sheet that if you Google, I would say intermediate. Yeah, Google Book goes, and it's a bottomless pit. <laughs> but it's so great that it's all just available on IMSLP. And sure, there's a lot of things in music stories that are being published now. And that's a whole another rabbit hole, too. But take a look at what's online and see if you can represent different countries and different time periods and different styles. And then make sure you have your hook. You have to sell your music. You have to be able to play it for them well. And then you have to have a question that is answered by these pieces. And I think you'll enjoy the journey that you'll take with them. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you.